I remember my first, I suppose, stereotypical concussion quite well because it happened in training and I was on driving home from training and I had to stop the car because I didn't know where I was or how to get home. Concussion is a brain injury. It's caused by force transmitted either directly to the head or indirectly to the head through a blow to the body. Over the course of my career, like I've played from 17, and even before that when I was a kid growing up, you know, I would say looking back at least, you know, one a year over the course of my career. I wouldn't have known at the time there were concussions, but looking back now, I would say definitely there were. There are several common misconceptions to do with concussion. I think the strongest one is the idea that you have to be knocked out to have a concussion. That only happens in about 10% of people. The vast majority of players who have a concussion don't lose consciousness, they're not knocked out. The other one would be that you have to have a bang on the head to get a concussion. It can be that it's just a shoulder charge, a body check, that can give enough force to the head and to the brain to cause a concussion without actually a bang on the head. So the concussion took place in a game. It was an aerial duel between me and the striker. Boat has gone up as normal. I did win the header, but then I head butted the back of her head. So it was about 10 minutes into the game. Just gone up for a header with, with a guy, gone to flip the ball on, and he's just come straight through me with his elbow to the back of my head, and I fell forward and smashed my face on the floor. You know, the last concussion I had um, in the last game I played was, was for Colorado Rapids playing in LA Galaxy, and banked to the head on the ground treatment and went through the you know, thing on the pitch with the doctor and the physio and it was fine. I thought it was 100%. It's only after five or 10 minutes I started to you know, um, feel not right, feel um, I suppose not, not forgetting stuff, but more uh, you know, uh, uh, there but not there feeling on the pitch. Looking back in my different concussions, it's always the case it was delayed. It wasn't something that I would have known straight away. It took, took five minutes, 10 minutes to kick in. The med team immediately came onto the pitch um, and then obviously instantly they could see where, you know, I'd had the impact on my head. Asked me a couple of questions, you know, where are you, what day is it, do you know the score, do you feel okay? And in that moment I did feel fine, I, I just, I remember asking them, is it caught, is, it, is there blood? And they said no, no blood's fine. And they said, are you okay to go back on? Because I passed all the questions, I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I wanted to play on, so my manager said we'll give you a few minutes and he was obviously just watching me play and I was moving like he, he described it like I was drunk and he, he said I, I had to come off because I wasn't moving properly. The nature of the grassroots game, you, you know, you can be playing against someone that used to be an ex-pro at times or you could be playing against someone that's been out the night before so that it's, it's a lot clumsier, a lot more physical at times. The key message is recognise and remove. So if you think somebody has suspected concussion, they should be removed from the field of play and not be allowed to return that same day and then an opinion sought from an experienced doctor. It wasn't until after the game and everything had settled and I could actually take time to reflect on what had happened that I started getting headaches and you know a real pain like just like a throb. The day after I think that night I couldn't really deal with light or, or noise. I got back and I just wanted to, to lay down pretty much and you know just rest and it was just extra everything was very sensitive. The day after I did go to my GP, because I was getting the symptoms of, of concussion, I was quite nauseous, I was being sick, I was dizzy, and he said, just don't go to sleep for the next few hours, because so I felt really, really tired. Um, and if the symptoms continue, you need to go to hospital to get checked out, but they didn't continue. Um, but he said to not play for two weeks, so I didn't. No, you know, just headaches, a lot lower energy levels, feeling, you know, lack of enthusiasm for training, lack of enthusiasm for games for the week or two afterwards. Probably should have just took it a little bit slower instead of rushing to get back. And obviously all I had in my head was the game. I was like, I've got to you know, push to get back. And obviously then at that point, I didn't really understand concussion or the symptoms or you know what you needed to look out for. So I think now I'm more educated on that. I can definitely look out for that in the future. And it is something I do take more seriously now. Five years ago, six, seven years ago, I would have, you know, just, you come back and you play a week later, you come back and play the next day, as in everyone else's case, you know, you got banged head, didn't feel great, and fine the next day. What I would say, give me a concussion your day, and wouldn't have given me a concussion seven or eight years previously. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that it became easier to get a concussion later on, due to maybe not taking the time out when I should have earlier in my career. If you have an injury, a brain injury, that's affecting your brain function, you're not going to be adding anything to the team. You're not going to be making effective decisions. You're not going to be contributing 
to the sports side of football. I got knocked out on the pitch for a good few seconds and I came around and uh, I played the rest of the game. I don't remember the game. That was, you know, stupid. You know, I come around on the pitch. I knew I'd been knocked out, um, but by the time the physio and the doctors came on, I suppose I was back to and I'm fine or whatever and I went and played the rest of the game, didn't remember it, flew off to play with Ireland I think afterwards. But again, that was 2008, you know, five, four or five years later that wouldn't be the case. You know, everyone's knowledge, everyone's seriousness of the issue, everyone, you know, players and, you know, staff are, are a lot more aware of it. So I don't think that would happen now, which is a very good thing. And I didn't play well in those few weeks, I played terrible actually, you know, it didn't help me at all. If they've got a brain injury, they won't be able to control their limbs while they're doing the sport, so they put themselves at risk of a knee injury or a muscle injury. The FA guideline has three main principles. Recognise and remove. If you suspect concussion, they should be removed from the field of play. Rest the body, rest the brain. That means that when somebody is removed, they have to undergo a particular rest period before they look to return to sport. Um, and then the graduated return to play, which is a sequential series of exercises that begin very low level and get slightly more intense all the way up to returning to play. The exact amount of time that that protocol takes will vary depending on the age of the, the injured player. Children have more conservative guidelines than adults and we'd recommend that everybody refers to the FA guideline that's online so that you can establish the exact time scales for your injured player. My dad, who I didn't really expect, he was like, you know, it's a serious thing, this mill, it's like rest of your life, it's not just your career, it's, it's your life itself. It's definitely something that I want to get across to people, you know, to make sure you take care of yourself and, you know, let the medicals do their job, even if it is you're passionate about getting back and, you know, you want to put yourself in a better position, you know, moving forward in the future, it could have, it could have really affected me, but, you know, luckily um, I've learnt from that situation and yeah, moving forward it won't happen again. Speaking to the, you know, neurologist and all, they said the next concussion, you the problem is you get stuck with the symptoms, they don't go away after six weeks, they don't go away after two months, they could continue with you for the foreseeable future. So that was, you know, the, when I decided I'm 34 and time to uh, you know, take their advice. When two months of finishing, I felt back to myself after the last concussion last September. Now, thankfully, I don't have any side effects. You know, I have to be careful, any bang, bangs to the head now, I, I don't feel great straight away. Any, any little, you know, knock from my son or whatever when I'm playing with him, he gives me a little bang back saying I don't feel great, but it clears up very quickly. And um, so I'm glad I, that was the reason we came to the decision to to retire when I did. You know, football is, is a fantastic game, but it can affect you in the long term. Um, you know, it's, it is your life you've got to look after ultimately. Um, and I think within County FAs they're doing a great job now of raising awareness of, of concussion um, because it's not just the coaches and the, the medical staff that need to be aware of it, it's the players themselves. As a player and as a teammate, look out for your other teammates. If your teammate's not looking right, you can take a bit of responsibility for them and make them get off the pitch. Decision making around recognise and remove can be very difficult because there's a lot of outside pressures. Players want to play, coaches want players to play, even medics want players to play. But if, if you think about what we said about the player with a brain injury, they can't process information with a concussion. They're, they're not thinking straight. They're not thinking in a rational way. It's important that the, the coach and anybody else and other players and the medics all trust what they see and what they feel more than what the player is saying because the player's not really a reliable witness if they've got a concussion. I'd just say no matter how big the game is or what situation you're in, you know, your, your health comes first and without your health there's no career anyway. Kind of just be open about ev absolutely everything and maybe not mention the game, maybe just, just focus on the moment like you're in. I really felt in America when players have concussion, it was just oh, he's concussion, he's out for two weeks and it was just like someone had a calf strain or out for two weeks or a hamstring strain for out for two weeks. It's all for everyone's benefit, for players' health, for their long-term health and for their you know, current health to be able to go out and play better. You know, there's no point in going out and playing next week um, and not playing well. Do what you're told, do what's right, and come back and you'll, you'll feel better and play better for it. If in doubt, sit it out. <laughs>